Oh, what's up guys, I'm Kaushik and last week I uploaded a video uh, regarding my experience of doing an overnight project right from getting idea to implementing it to debugging it and to get the final output but it was a time lapse and many of you have requested me to make a tutorial video of the same project so I decided to make one and here it is <laughs> so uh, for those of you who haven't seen that video the main idea of that project is to change the controls of the Angry Birds game. So we usually use mouse or trackpad to play the PC game of Angry Birds, right? Rather than that, however, we use the actual hand. And the controls will be like an actual sling, like, you know, pinch down to the mouse down and you can drag and you can release. So it will you will get an actual feel of a sling. So this is, this is what I was I implemented and the link will be in the description for my old video. Please do check it out and like. So, I have implemented that using MediaPy for hand detection and PyAuto GUI for automating the mouse events. So anyways, uh, that will be explained further in the video. So. so let's jump into the coding part. So what is the first thing we want? We want to, we want to collect the frames from our webcam, right? And how do we do that? Uh, we do that using OpenCV module and how do we install that? It's very simple. Open the terminal. The command is pip3 install OpenCV hyphen pipe. I already have it so I already I get this way and uh, how do we import this module? It's very simple. Import CV2. Let me just minimize this. And now we need access to our web camera. That's when we can collect the frames and how do we get the access? It's very simple again. Like, let me just write camera, camera dot video capture. And here you can write the camera number. So if you're having more than two cameras, you can just enter the index of each camera and check it out. So here I'm using my second camera. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to write one. And now we have to continuously collect the frames, right? Like until, until the game exists or until we end the program, we have to collect the games, right? So let's just write an infinite loop for that. And how do we capture the video now? It's very simple. Let's me let me call this image or frame anything you want to call camera dot read. So here we got the image and let's show what exactly is the image. Uh, for showing it's cb2 dot im show image comma. You can give any name you want. I'm just going to give image. So it's pretty simple. But here we are. This is an infinite loop, right? So we are collecting frames continuously, but we don't we, we don't want that way. We want it as a stream. Uh, so we have to introduce at least a one millisecond of delay, right? So let's just introduce that. Uh, how do we do that again? It's again cb2 dot wait key one, which represents one millisecond. Is equals to is equals to ORT of q. Let me just give small q. I guess it doesn't matter actually. Break. So what exactly is happening here? So for before uh, after after every iteration, it's gonna wait one millisecond, and if the user or I am pressing Q, it will come out of the loop. So let me just run the code and see what's exactly. Happening. Yeah, as you can see, there is no delay. There's only everything is perfectly fine. So our first part is over. It's pretty simple. I'm pressing Q here, sorry, and the code ended. That's good. Wow. So what is the second part? The second part is to detect the hand, right? So how do we exactly detect the hand? As I already told you before, we are going to use a module called media pipe. So how do we install that? It's very simple. Pip3 install media pipe. I already installed it, but uh, it will take a while for you guys. So let's, let, let's just import that particular module. Import media pipe as MP. And now how do we do that? So how do we detect hand from it? So we have no idea, right? So let's just check the documentation. So this is a documentation. The link will be in the description guys. Don't worry. And uh, let's go here. Yep. So here he imported media pipe and he, he used the drawing utils just to draw, I guess. And let's see here. So there are so many solutions in the media pipe, right? There's a face, iris, pose, holistic and everything. But we are focusing on our hand. So let's just take that particular model. So how do we do that? Again, mp.solution.hands. So we have the hand detection model in, in, our, in our hands. Now, how do we use it? 
let me go down here so this is for the webcam input and this is for the static image it doesn't really matter so here there are two parameters which is minimum detection confidence and minimum tracking confidence pretty self-explanatory to be honest minimum tracking confidence is basically how fast you're moving like how fast am i moving if you if you move very fast it won't detect a hand and that confidence is 50 percent that's so using this we are detecting the we are detecting our hand and where exactly that is happening so if you go down so he's, he's, he's also taking the image and he's converting the bgr to rgb so bgr is basically blue green red that's how we'll get our images we are converting that to red green blue because that's how the that that's how this model requires so here let's see here it's results dot hands dot there's a pro, there's a function called process which is processing our image and giving us the landmarks of our hand right and how do we draw it like we can't like blindly say we got hand right we have to draw it to we, we have to have a visual confirmation that we detected a hand or not so for that he has written a, a little bit piece of code here so draw landmarks is basically what they does like what it does wow that's pretty simple so let, let's just do this in our code as well so let's just import the hands and here and let's just write hands is equals to of mp underscore hands dot hands i mean i'm gonna leave with the 50 percent 50 percent because i'm fine with it i'm not gonna move my hand really fast so uh, i'm definitely fine with this so let's convert our image to rgb and how do we do that pretty simple again let's convert let's the converted image called cimg converted image and we have a function called convert color or cbt color and what is the frame we want to convert it's the frame which we are capturing and see we to, to what color we are converting bgr to rgb that's very simple so let me just show this particular image as well so that you will see how exactly the converted image looks like image image so let's run the code and uh, yeah this is the oh, one second. oh i shit this is cimg my bad uh don't worry about these warnings these are fine it's okay so this is the converted image this is how the converted image looks like so this is the rgb image which we got okay so let's just process our hand very fast and how do we do that we already saw it right results is equals to one second let me see where it is so okay yeah results is equal to hands dot process so let, let me let us just do that results is equal to hands dot process and what image we want we want the converted image so let's just give c image now we got the results now let's print them or visually draw the hands here draw draw the landmarks in which this particular module is detecting and how do we do that we only given us we don't have to worry that much about it so if you go up here yeah this is how we have to draw our hands so you can't use normal open cv functions to draw our hands right now so let's just use this particular thing and uh, let me run the code okay without okay yeah let me just run the code and see what is going to happen so this is the converted image let me open my original image and if you see my hand is detected wow well and good and if i put my both the hands and both the hands are detected so this is pretty clear right? and if i move it faster farther everything is working fine and what are these points you may ask uh, i'm going to i'm going to explain about this in a while but for now we got an image and we detect a hand in the previous in the previous module we have discussed about how do we get the frames from our webcam and how do we use media pipe module to do the face detection and for the visual confirmation we even drew few landmarks on our hand if you recollect so let me just run the code to show you those landmarks again uh, so if you see it there are few landmarks here right there, there's, there's this point then there are these points and what exactly are this well let's let's see the documentation to understand this so so this is the documentation so so the media pipe module which is detecting the hand so whenever it detects the hand it will return the positions of these 21 points 
so let's just say we want the tip of our index finger so we can just take the eighth index of the array of uh, positions it, it it returned the model returned and how exactly do we know how exactly do we do that it's pretty simple right so let me just it's becoming too clumsy out here let me just slow it down yeah it's becoming too clumsy out here so let me just write a function saying get landmarks okay and uh, i'm just gonna send landmarks here so this is basically what our model is returning so exactly i mean these to be more precise so how do we know whether it is the index finger or middle finger or whatever so let's just say we want the tip of that index finger which is eight okay so how do how do we print the position of the eight uh so for that we have to write a small code you know, for index comma landmark in landmarks dot landmark so this will return all the landmark all the landmarks which are there like all the 21 landmark and uh, let's just enumerate it so we'll, we'll get an array of sorts and we are just enumerating it so that we can we can we can have index and lms at the same time because it will be easier for us to understand and now if the index is equal to is equal to what is the value for the tip of the index it's eight it's eight then I'm just going to print saying index position is LM. Okay. And we and we don't want every all the position, we just want X and Y coordinates. So we can just write LM dot X, comma LM dot Y. So let me just call this function real quick and uh, get landmarks and it's landmark. So it's hand underscore landmarks. That's good. So let me quickly run the code. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so there is no hand detected yet. So yeah. And consider on my index positions. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. And as I move, it is going from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 to be precise. So why exactly are we getting in the ranges of zero and one? So the media pipe module, it will return all the positions with respect to, with respect to the, uh, okay, with respect to this particular image. So to, to get the precise position, we have to multiply whatever it is returning with the width and height of our image. So the X should be multiplied with the width and the Y should be multiplied with the height. So for that, we need to get the height right. So how do we do that? It's pretty simple again let's go to the function and let's just say hand height width and c c is the color dimension uh, for rgb it's three and for k scale it's one so is equals to for of what we want we want for this particular image right height and width of this particular image or this image both are same so i'm just gonna write image dot shape so it will return the dimension of this particular image which exact which is exactly what we want let me just print this real quick and uh, let me see and let me just comment this and pass so i'm gonna run this code and see what is exactly the height and width of our image here so i'm gonna show the hand here and it's 720 and 1280 so what is 720 is the height and 1280 is the width. So we have to multiply these with our X and Y position to get the accurate position of our index finger. Uh, so let's just do that. And uh, so this is into width and this is into height. That's good. And let me just remove this pass. You don't need it anymore. And now let's see. Now let's see if we, okay, let me just comment this too. And let's run so yep and my index finger now it, now if you can see if i'm going from top extreme left it's going to zero and when i'm going to extreme right it's going from 1200 or sorts so i guess the, the code is working pretty fine now right it's going from minus 18 everything is working pretty good so let me just stop it and this is how we get the positions of each and every landmark which is returned by media pipe but we don't need all right so what do we need exactly for our project so let me just 
come in this and let's just discuss about what exactly do we need for our project so here our aim is to do the pinch right so we are doing the pinch we are sliding it and we are releasing it out so that's how our controls work right so what exactly happening when we are pinching so i'm going to do it here so whenever i'm pinching i usually pinch this way yeah what what are the two fingers which are very pivotal to a pin these two right and these three it doesn't even matter these two are the pivotal fingers which can tell whether we are pinching or not and how do we detect that let's see let's see so i'm having here so this is a non pinch and i'm pinching i'm pinching and what exactly what is the one thing which is changing consider the distance between the tip of the thumb and the tip of the index so this is the highest it is the highest i can get to be honest and i am slowly getting those two down this is how the pinch works right so the distance between those two is also decreasing and after a point of time it's almost becoming zero it's almost becoming zero not exactly it might become zero who knows but it's almost becoming zero and i consider this is also a pinch so after some threshold value it is not a pinch but until then it's a pinch so from here to here let's say it's a pinch so what exactly do we want we want to have the distance between these two that's how we are going to detect our pinch right so if it is like here it's a pinch it's a pinch it's a pinch but this is not a pinch so now we want to find out the threshold and how do we do that let's let's we have to do it manually because uh, it depends on the person who is playing right so let's me let me just run stop this code and this is the in, this is the tip of the index finger right? so we want tip of the thumb as well so that is the fourth index so let me just write it real quick if index is equals to is equals to 4 yeah without instead of printing let's just save it in some in some data so i'll i'll just call this thumb position and i'm going i'm going to initialize this to null list and here index position and here also i'm going to initialize this to null list and whenever our index is 8 which is index tip position to be precise we just have to change this is equals to mm, yeah lm dot x into width and lm dot y into height as we discussed earlier and same goes for our thumb as well so let's just say thumb position and yeah it works all fine so now what do we want we want the distance between these two right so these two are essentially a, essentially two points so you can either use the formula or if you're too lazy you can just use you can just import the math module in python and calculate the distance so let's go to print here print how the distance is and i'm just going to say a uh, math dot dist of two points which is index position and thumb position yeah so let me just run the code and check it out how exactly is this happening yeah so they are okay sorry i'm not even uh, calling this um, i'm not even calling this function lol yeah <laughs> so yeah let's check it out what exactly is happening so there is no hand so right and yeah there is a hand and concentrate on these two points only uh so though it is maximum and whenever i get these two down it is getting minimum uh, i'm going to do this way because it's going to be much clearer for you guys to see it uh, concentrate on the console output so i'm here so this is the, this is the actual pinch right and sometimes we do like this sometimes we do like this it doesn't matter but this is an actual pinch so the values are not more than 20 or 30 and i consider this is also a pinch so let's just consider this as a threshold to be precise so it's 45 48 or so on and so forth right so we it's safe to say that 50 can be a threshold so if the distance is more than 50 then it is not a pinch if it is less than 50 then it's definitely a pinch so let's just code that and how do we do that is right distance is equals to one this is this particular code 
and now if distance is less than or equal to 50 which represents pinch so I'm, I'm going to change this function to ease pinch because we are just checking whether it is a pinch or not whether the hand is a pinch or not I'm just going to say it's returning true and else it is returning false but there is a mistake though here what if what if I'm not even showing any hand right or what if I don't show my index and thumb positions then these two will be null sets and uh, it will throw an error to make sure that this is not happening let's just write an if condition if length of index position is equal to should be equals to 2 and the length of the thumb position should be also equal to 2 which re which represents that we both we found the index position and the thumb position and uh, let's just enter this code everywhere yeah and now if this is not the case if we didn't find any thumb and index let's just return false so i'm going to go down change this to east pinch and I'm going to print. I'm going to print this e pinch to see if it is true or false. So let me just run the code. Yeah. So there is no hand, so it is not going in. And there is a hand, it's false currently. And now let's see. I'm putting my hands together. I'm putting my hands together. I'm going to bring my hand. Now it became true. Okay, let's just, I'll do this way so it will be easier for you. I'm putting my hand further, it's false. Putting my hand together, it's true. Put my hand further, it's false. So what are our controls? Pinch, which is true. Drag and release, which is false. So I guess it's pretty clear. <laughs> so in this module, we have discussed about how do we detect if it is a pinch or not and how to get positions of our landmarks. So see you in next module. So, so far we have discussed how do we get frames from our webcam and how do we use media pipe for our hand detection and we even detected if it is a pinch or not. So let's just run the code and check what are, what is the output so far. So let's, let's just try to understand. Yeah. So this is my hand and I'm not doing the pinch. So it's the output is false. And when I'm putting my thumb and index together, it's true now. And when I move, it's true, it's true, because it's just, it's only focusing on the distance. And when I move it farther apart, it's false. When I move it further in, it's true, further apart, false. But these are the controls. So let's just recollect what should be our controls of Angry Birds game. So it should be pinch, drag, and release, right? But that's not, that's not how we essentially play the PC game, right? In PC, we use the, the mouse, and the mouse, mouse down, slide, and mouse up. So if we compare these two, our hand and pinch is essentially the mouse down and we drag it, that should change the, the direction of the mouse as well and we should release it. So mouse down, drag, mouse up. So in this module, we're going to discuss about the distance part or the drag part. So we need to know the direction in which direction and the length in which we are dragging our cursor or when we are dragging our sling in Angry Birds. So for that, let me just stop this code. So for that, we need to know in what direction are we moving. So, uh, so say for example, this is where the pinch started. I can either move like this or I can move like this. I can move like this and I can move like this too. Depends on depends on the game, right? If the if the if the, if the angry bird should kill that side, so we should do like this. If the angry bird kill that side, we should do like this. So we it's essential for us to know in which direction are we moving our hand, and for that we need a frame of reference. The frame of reference will be the pinch position, which is the, the position in which we first started to pinch. Okay. So how do we write that? So let's just okay. Let me just minimize this and. Let's initialize it something like this, say pinch underscore position. Okay. And let's just initialize it to nothing, null. And here, when we detected it, we can initialize this with the midpoint of these two because they are two points essentially, right? So we can take the midpoint as the frame of reference. So we can write a uh, pinch position is equals to uh, it's a midpoint of these two guys, so let me just quickly write that. 
it's uh, yeah so it's thumb position of 0 plus index position of 0 by 2 you can take the integer version also it doesn't really matter and because it's just for distance right and same goes with the y direction as well so yeah let me just write this here so that you can see it yeah so we have the pinch position but uh, this is a local variable right? but we don't want to change the local variable we have to change the global variable so for that we can write global pinch position but we are we are executing this function each and every time we're getting a pinch position that is wrong right we need to get we we need to change the pinch position only for the first time we use the pinch and how can we do that if the length of the pinch position is null or zero that means what we are doing this for the first time and we can change the position accordingly so the pinch position is changed so now what do we want now we want our current position so here we started the pinch and we are moving here so now we want this particular position right so let me just write a function for that get current position and uh, here let's take two inputs saying pinch position okay let's just let's just take landmarks it's essentially this so where is it yeah so we can just rewrite this code okay let me just yeah you can just rewrite this code here and if it if the length is both then we have to return the midpoint of those two because that is essentially the current point in which we are in so we are here so we took the mid midpoint of these two points and now we are here so now we are taking the midpoint of these two times these two points and checking in what direction in it in which it is going okay guys uh, i hope it's clear and uh, yeah and if it is not the case i mean if we didn't find any thumb or thing we just have to return an all null set so it's cool and we have to compute the distance or direction only if we found the pinch so let's just write if condition here if there is a pinch and uh, if this pinch will take care of the pinch position as well so now we have to get the current position right so let's just write current position is equals to get current position so hand underscore landmarks so now we have the current position so the pinch is so the frame of reference is here now we are here now we have to change the directions accordingly right so let me write the code for that so change directions i'm going to write another function called change direction and it will take two parameters which is pinch position and uh, what else and current position okay so let's just say this is our frame of reference and like this is the pinch position and now we are moving down to here that means what the x value is increasing and the y value is increasing so let's just have an array called directions uh, as a 2d array initialized to 0 comma 0 because initially the cursor should not move right so when we are in up position or when we are not moving when we are still it should not move so uh, we are we are at this particular point and we are moving in the positive direction of x-axis i mean the x value is increasing and the y value is also increasing so we'll represent that by one so if the x value is increasing then the direction of x will be one and the direction of y is one then the y value is increasing the direction of x will be uh decreasing then y direction of x will be minus one and direction of y will be minus one so let me just write that so if the current position index if it is greater than the pinch position index okay then the direction of zero that means the x direction is positive it is moving to the right side and else if if both directions are equal then it should not move at all right so direction of zero is equal to zero and if that is also not the case then we can have direction of zero is equal to one which means we are moving to the left side so this is the current position and we are moving like this okay so this should be minus one yeah and the same and the same logic works for our y direction as well so whenever we're moving down like this that means the y direction is one whenever we are moving up the y direction is minus one
so let me just quickly change the code accordingly and yep and yeah so when do we have to call this change direction so whenever there is a pinch and whenever we are moving right so there is a current we are taking the current position and if the okay when there is a pinch there will be definitely a inch, uh, pinch position so let's just call the change directions of pinch position and current position i think i read the parameters right right yeah pinch and current and pinch and current yeah okay and now i'll print the directions here so that uh, we'll know exactly what is happening direction okay so another thing say for example now i pinched and i and i dragged it to here and i'm releasing it and now again i'm pinching this should be the new frame of reference right so whenever i'm releasing and whenever i'm not in the pinch position we have to reset all the variables again because we are again we are going to begin everything from the starting again right so let's just write that if uh this pinch is there and if that's not the case if that is not the case then reset everything how do we reset it we'll just say pinch position is nothing again and directions are 0 comma 0 because we are not moving uh why am i taking an array for directions i'll let you know later so so we have a pinch and we have direction so let's just print and okay you're already printing so let's see if it is working perfectly or not so initially it's zero comma zero because we're not moving it and this is my hand and we're not in pinch position right so it's obviously zero comma zero and now this is a pinch position and there's a frame of reference and i'm moving completely like this so now see my x uh, like if you see the image my x is towards left side and my y is bouncing that means my x is decreasing and my y is increasing that's why it's minus one 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 minus one and now i'm up again so i'm resetting everything so my pinch is here and now i'm moving in bottom of direction and now i go up so the directions are that i mean because you can't see it yeah so everything is negative right now and i go like this it's negative and i go like this is positive so as you can see the uh, we got the directions we got the directions perfectly right so depending on the image it is in we are going to check the directions okay that's cool so let me just comment this and run the code again to figure out exactly what we want here so initially we are at this particular point right and when 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 i am moving my left it is going to right because it's a mirror image of course but let's let's see what should be our mouse positions it should be with respect to the image or it should be respect to me so i'm going to put my cursor here and it's pinch position so it's sorry it's down and i'm it's it should move with respect to the image direction and up so this is how i play the game right i do this and up so the directions are with respect to the image not with respect to the player or me so lucky us we got the directions with respect to the image only so if it is if it is moving left then we got the we made it to minus one and everything so in this module we discussed the the part one of this module we've discussed the uh discuss the directions in which we are going in uh in the further models let's just discuss how do we move the move, how do we move the cursor accordingly peace so in the part one of the module tree we have discussed how how do how do we change the directions like from frame of reference what should be the directions of the current cursor like it should should it move to the left side or should it move to the right side so on and so forth but now let's actually move the move the cursor so that we can emulate the controls how do we do that well there's this module called pi auto gui which basically take care of everything and installing that is again very simple pip3 install pi auto g u i yeah so i already installed it. it will take a time for you guys so let's import that pi auto g u i as pg okay but okay so how this works we don't know how pi auto g u i is like you are you're you're doing this for the first time so what are you going to do we want to check the documentation 
so this is the documentation of average year for the mouse controls especially so let's just say we want the current x position or current position of the cursor we can use dot position so let's just print it and check it out if it is working or not so we have it here so we want the position of the cursor only when we pinch right so let's just write here pg dot position okay so let me just make this over so I'm gonna run this and yeah, I'm gonna open the two and yeah. So I'm gonna do the pinch and if you can see the point, we are getting a point with the cursors. I mean, we are getting the cursors positions. I'm going down. So we are getting the cursors positions accordingly. So that's well and good, right? But that's not what we want here. We want to move the cursor. So how do we move the cursor? So let's see. Uh, so there's this function called move to in which we can represent the next position and our next position will be depending on our the direction in which we are moving right so let's create a function saying move mouse or move cursor move cursor makes more sense right yeah so if the direction is positive or it is moving like this then it should uh, then our cursor should also move in that particular direction right so that's why that's why we created an array uh, instead of just taking two boolean variables so let's just take the current position of the x and y so i'll be like pg dot position dot x which is the x position of the current position of the x and pg dot position or y so that's the y so we have the current position and now we have to change the new positions so let's just say new underscore x is equal to pg position or x plus direction of zero why do you write direction of zero so if it is moving positive that means what our current our even our cursor should move towards right side right that means what it has to increase than the current x position and i'm increasing it by one for now uh, i'll tell you i'll tell you why i'm doing this later on so a new underscore y is equal to y plus direction of one so th there might be a case where we are here and we get a negative value, right? If you do press or push to all, we'll get more than the actual screen resolution. Then this entire, uh, then the PyAuto GUI will be throwing an error. So to just to uh, just to make sure that is not happening, let's just write this in a try catch block so that we can get rid of that error. Yeah. So here, except in Java, it's catch and it's except here. So and now in try block now what we have the new current positions and we have to move our cursor accordingly right so for that there's a function called move to which we have already seen move to the new x and the new y so that's great that's awesome right so let me just run this code before that let me remove this and let me print saying move the mouse so I'm somewhere here and uh, sorry yeah I'll just put this here so that won't be a case okay con I mean focus on my console or my cursor there and I'm pinching and I'm moving it down okay I'm releasing and I'm pinching and I'm moving it up I'm moving it down from that particular frame of reference moving it side moving it down yeah so it is working fine but it's too slow right so you're pinching and moving it down see it's working way too slow actually so let's just increase the speed and we can increase the speed that's why that's why i wrote plus here so currently let's just say the speed is one because we restored let me just open the code yeah this is plus direction of zero right so it is going moving slow so let's just make it into 10 like let's see how fast that will go uh so i'm gonna run the code again check it out and this is the okay focus on the cursor again and i'm pinching and i'm moving up it's doing too fast i guess what do you think i'm moving this is my pinch position and i'm moving right moving left sorry all right yeah, moving left and going up and pinch moving up moving down I, I think this speed works for me but i think this is also is way too fast so let me just decrease the speed by say two points let's just make it eight i think that would be optimal so let's run the code and uh, 
yeah focus on the again i don't have to tell you again but focus on the cursor so the cursor is directly here and it's pinch and i'm moving down up pinch moving up moving side moving down so everything is working amazingly so yeah now we have moved the cursor but that's not just it right so if you see the consoles of the angry words game in the pc we have to press the mouse button and then move and then release the mouse button right so that we are we are not doing that particular part anyway so let's just do it then so whenever there is a pinch so whenever we are pinching that means what the the mouse should be down or we have to click down the button of the mouse so we can write it here and how do we do it it's very simple guys pg dot mouse down that's it it's that simple and here pg dot mouse up mouse up so that's it so i think 90 percent of our product is already over so let's just open the code and uh, sorry for the disturbance yeah so Again, I don't have to tell you. Yeah, I don't have to tell you, but focus on the cursor. It's going down. It's going up. See, everything is moving according to the frame of reference, right? It's going down. It's going up, and like this. So yeah, the mouse button is getting down also. It's not showing perfectly, but yeah. So in this module, we have. Uh, oh, sorry, I think yeah. Just run. Yeah. So yeah. In this module, we have taken care of the mouse movements as well. So according to our hand, our mouse is also moving now currently. So let in the next module, we'll see how do we use this particular code in the Angry Birds game. Uh, so hey guys, before we jump into the module 4, there's a slight change in our previous module actually. So what happened was we have uh, previously we have written new y is equals to y plus direction of 1 into 8, which is like a straight line. but that won't give us the optimal result right because we have to we have to change the angle of the sling sometimes you know like so initially we are here when we do this then the angle of the sling is different when we do this the angle of sling is different and that is also very pivotal while we play the angry birds game so i just changed the way we camp we compute the y direction because x direction is just one direction right so it doesn't really matter but the y direction we have to change according to the slope and how do we do that i'm computing the slope here so i just removed the mathematical exception that is the x values are equal and now here i computed the slope and uh, now i have the slope i have the new x and i already have the old positions of x now all i gotta do is to calculate the y position it's simple coordinate geometry guys it's the line equation is y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1 where m being the slope and y1 x1 are the known points of the line so we already have the known points of the line and we have the x direction and now we are computing the new y direction y minus y1 this is the old y which we know the direction which implies whether we have to move forward or move backward into slope because slope the, the one which we calculated into new x is the x and x1 is the old x so now we can even check with the direction as well so Coming to the module 4, which is using this particular code to actually play Angry Birds game. Um, so this is the this is the Facebook Angry Birds game and uh, let's just open one of the levels. And let's just open the basic level for now. And now the Angry Birds game is ready, right? So we are ready to use our code to play the game, right? So let me just open it and run the code here. <clears throat> my back yeah i yeah so now it's the pinch up position let me open the game let me put the cursor here because that's where we have to actually press it and pinch slide check it and slip and that's it so i i think it's working perfect actually so let me just move the cursor to here and pinch slide and you can rotate wherever the hell you want to rotate and move so that's how it works guys and it's that simple to build something very cool in this way so don't forget to hit that like button and if you have any doubts regarding this code please do mention in the comments thank you